Buenos dias, hello, and welcome to the first section of your basic Spanish conversational course. In this section, as in all other sections in this program, you will first be presented with a dramatized version of a situation commonly encountered when traveling to and in a Spanish-speaking country. In all probability, you will find it difficult to understand the words and phrases contained in these dramatized sections when first viewing them. Do not worry. Just listen closely and try to get a sense of what is being said. Listen to the sounds and the rhythms of the spoken words. The meanings of all the words and phrases contained in the dramatized sections will be reviewed and fully explained immediately after these sections are presented. Now settle back and relax. Join us as we arrive at an airport outside of Madrid and try to find transportation into town. Here, we find that since it is some distance away, perhaps it might be better to take the bus. Esta maleta es muy pesada. Y el pasaporte no lo encuentro. Señorita, señorita. Sí, señor. ¿Dónde están los taxis, por favor? ¿A dónde van ustedes? Vamos al centro de la ciudad. El centro está muy lejos. Está muy lejos. Sí. Y en taxi es muy caro. En autobús es más barato. ¿Dónde está la parada del autobús? Allá, cerca de la salida. Ah, sí, muy bien. Muchas gracias. ¿Es su primer viaje a España, señora? Sí, es nuestro primer viaje. ¿De dónde son ustedes? Somos americanos. Mire, este es el autobús que va a Madrid. Adiós, Adiós señorita, señorita. Y, y muchas, muchas gracias. gracias. Adiós, señor. Adiós, señora. Que lo pasen bien en España. Now, before we examine the words and phrases you have just seen used at the airport, here are a few suggestions that will help you to use this program most effectively. First, when practicing all the exercises found in this program, remember to repeat, out loud if possible, the words and phrases that you hear immediately after they are presented. This will not only help you to recognize and remember them, but will also help you to get used to actually using them correctly with the right pronunciations and inflections. Also, if you have an audio tape recorder, it would be a good idea to record the words and phrases that are presented, followed by your own pronunciation of them. This will help you to determine how well you are doing by comparison, as well as reinforce the learning process. Now to begin, let's examine three words commonly used when addressing someone. They are señor, señora, and señorita, which mean Mr., Mrs., and Miss. Repeat these words after me. Señor. Señora. Señorita. In the dramatized scene at the airport, you saw the couple trying to find a taxi. In unfamiliar places and situations, when trying to determine where various things are located, you will find much use for the word donde, which means where, which is followed by either the word esta, meaning is, or están, meaning are. Donde esta? Where is? Donde están? Where are? Let's practice these words. Donde están los taxis, por favor? Donde está la parada del autobús?
¿Dónde están las maletas? ¿Dónde está el centro de la ciudad? ¿Dónde está el correo, por favor? ¿Dónde está la estación, por favor? ¿Dónde están los billetes? ¿Dónde está la salida, por favor? You will notice that after asking a question, we often use the expression por favor. This is the Spanish equivalent of please and is a polite way of asking a question or for something. Unlike in English, in Spanish all common nouns are categorized as either masculine or feminine in gender. In the case of masculine nouns, these nouns are preceded by the word el if the noun is singular, and los, if plural. Nouns that are feminine in gender are preceded by the words la, if singular, and las, if plural. Thus, for example, when talking of the taxi in Spanish, we would say el taxi, if speaking of a single taxi and lost taxis if speaking of more than one taxi. Since the word taxi is categorized as a masculine noun in Spanish. When talking about the city in Spanish, we would say la ciudad if speaking about a city. Or las ciudades if speaking of more than one city, since the word for city in Spanish, ciudad, is feminine in gender. There are no definite rules to help determine what makes a particular noun either feminine or masculine in Spanish. And the only way this will be learned is by continued correct usage of the nouns being learned. Let's practice the usage of some of these Spanish nouns. El hotel. Los hoteles. La ciudad. Las ciudades. El autobús. Los autobuses. La plaza. Las plazas. Now, let's examine the Spanish verb ir, which means to go in English. It is important to know that verbs vary and are pronounced differently depending on the person or persons taking the action described. Let's practice the use of this verb ir used in various forms. Voy al centro de la ciudad. Vamos al centro de la ciudad. María va a Barcelona. Pablo va a Barcelona. María y Pablo van a Barcelona. In Spanish, as in English, intonations given spoken words can indicate how they are being used and their meaning in a sentence. For instance, to ask a question. ¿Dónde está la parada del autobús? ¿De dónde son ustedes? ¿A dónde van ustedes? ¿Está muy lejos? 
Now let's try some questions and answers, remembering to pay attention to word intonations and how they contribute to the meaning of the sentences presented. Son ustedes americanos? Sí, somos americanos. Van al centro de la ciudad. Sí, vamos al centro de la ciudad. ¿Es su primer viaje a España? Sí, es nuestro primer viaje a España. In Spanish, there are two different forms of the verb to be. For example, when asking, where are the taxis? In Spanish, we would say, ¿Dónde están los taxis? But when asking, where are you from? We would say, ¿De dónde son ustedes? Now let's practice the proper use of these two forms. Yo soy americana. Estoy en Madrid. María es española. Está en el aeropuerto. Somos americanos y estamos perdidos. Ustedes son de California y están en España. Pablo es estudiante y está en la biblioteca. Juan es médico. Está en el hospital. El taxi es muy caro. El taxi está allá. Now let's practice two words that will prove very useful when indicating the location of people or objects. They are allá, meaning there or at a distance, and cerca, which means near or close to. Here are some examples of these words in use. ¿Dónde está la parada? Allá, cerca de la salida. ¿Dónde están las maletas? Allá, cerca de la puerta. ¿Dónde está el correo? Allá, cerca de la plaza. When indicating by which means one is traveling, we use the word en in Spanish, which means by in English. Here are some examples. Voy a Madrid en avión. Pablo va a Barcelona en tren. María va al centro en taxi. María y yo vamos a Ibiza en barco. Voy a la estación en taxi. And now for some expressions that you will often find use for when speaking Spanish. Remember to repeat them after they are presented and think of their meaning as you say them. Buenos días. Buenas tardes. Buenas noches. Adiós. Hasta la vista. Gracias. Muchas gracias. 
Muy bien. Muy bien. Very good. You have now finished this section of your first lesson. And now you will see the same scene presented at the start of this lesson again in a slightly slower version. This time you will find subtitles with the pictures. They are included as an aid and not as a crutch and should not be used unless absolutely necessary for comprehension of what is being viewed. Buena suerte! Good luck! Señorita! Señorita! Sí, señor. ¿Dónde están los taxis, por favor? ¿A dónde van ustedes? Vamos al centro de la ciudad. El centro está muy lejos. Está muy lejos. Sí, y en taxi es muy caro. En autobús es más barato. ¿Dónde está la parada del autobús? Allá, cerca de la salida. Ah, sí. Muy bien. Muchas gracias. ¿Es su primer viaje a España, señora? Sí, es nuestro primer viaje. ¿De dónde son ustedes? Somos americanos. Mire, este es el autobús que va a Madrid. Adiós, Adiós señorita, señorita. Y, y muchas, muchas gracias. gracias. Adiós, señor. Adiós, señora. Que lo pasen bien en España. I hope that you were able to understand most if not all, of the scene you have just watched. If so, you should now go back and review the first presentation of the scene at the airport, where you will find the lines spoken at a normal conversational speed. If you had difficulty in understanding the scene just presented, it would be a good idea to review the sections pertaining to the words or phrases you missed or had difficulty with.